So in a few minutes, OpenAI will announce GPT-4. They will show us the developer preview of what's new in the latest uh, large language model. Now, GPT-3 completely revolutionized the way that large language models are used and made them accessible for all. And there's a lot of rumors and a lot of hype around GPT-4. So I'm actually super curious to see which ones of the rumors are true. What are the main things OpenAI are renewing in GPT-4? I'm gonna be watching it together with you, commenting on it and sharing my opinion. At the same time, just trying to make demo and presentation shorter and more precise in a way to summarize it as well. So let's get started. OpenAI has been building this technology really since we started the company, but for the past two years, we've been really focused on delivering GPT-4. So the first thing I wanna show you is the first task that GPT-4 could do that we never really got 3.5 to do. And so we all had a pet task that we really liked and that we would all individually be trying to see, is the model capable of it now? So I'm just gonna copy the top of our blog post from today, going to paste it into our playground. Now this is our new chat completions playground that came out two weeks ago. I'm gonna show you first with GPT 3.5, four has the same API to it, the same playground. The way that it works is you have a system message where you explain to the model what it's supposed to do and we've made these models very steerable. So you can provide it with really any instruction you want, whatever you dream up. And the model will adhere to it pretty well. And in the future, it will get increasingly, increasingly powerful at, at steering the model very reliably. You can then paste whatever you want as a user. The model will return messages as an assistant. And the way to think of it is that we're moving away from sort of just raw text in, raw text out, where you can't tell where different parts of the conversation come from, but towards this much more structured format that gives the model the opportunity to know, well, this is the user asking me to do something that the developer didn't intend. I should listen to the developer here. All right, so now time to actually show you the task that I'm referring to. Summarize this, let's say article into a sentence, okay? Getting a little more specific, uh, but where every word begins with G. So this is 3.5, let's see what it does. Yeah, it kind of didn't even try, just gave up on the task. This is pretty typical for 3.5, trying to do this particular kind of task. If it's you know sort of a very kind of stilted article or something like that, maybe it can succeed, but for the most part, <clears throat> 3.5 just gives up. But let's try the exact same prompt in GPT-4. So kind of borderline, whether you want to count AI or not, uh, but so let's say AI doesn't count that's cheating. <laughs> That's absolutely so fair enough. Clean. The model happily accepts my feedback. But next, I wanna show you how to build with GPT-4, what it's like to create with it as a partner. And so the thing we're going to do is we're going to actually build a Discord bot. So uh, here is the prompt that we're going to ask it. Uh, this is the kind of thing that 3.5 would totally choke on if you've, if you've tried anything like it. Um, but so we're going to ask for a Discord bot that uses the GPT-4 API to uh, read images and text. And in general, these models are very good at using information that it's been trained on in new ways and synthesizing new content. And you can see that right here, that it actually wrote an entirely new bot. Now, let's actually see if this bot is gonna work in practice. And one thing to note is that the Discord API has changed a lot over time. And particularly that there's one feature that has changed a lot since this model was trained. Give it a try. In fact, yes, we are missing the intense keyword. This is something that came out in 2020. So the model does know it exists, but it doesn't know which version of the Discord API we're using. So are we out of luck? Well, not quite. We can just simply paste to the model exactly the error message, not even going to say, hey, this is from running your code, could you please fix it? We'll just let it run. And the model says, oh yeah, whoops, the intense argument. Here's the correct, here's the correct code. Oh wow, that will make writing code so much easier than before. That's really impressive. And it looks like something happened. So the first thing I'll do is go over to our Discord and I will paste in a screenshot of our Discord itself. So remember, GPT-4 is not just a language model. It's also a vision model. In fact, it can flexibly accept inputs that intersperse images and text arbitrarily, kind of like a document. Now, the image feature is in preview. So this is going to be a little sneak peek. It's not yet publicly available. It's something we're working with one partner called Be My Eyes in order to really start to develop it and get it ready for prime time. Just imagine being that partner that they just mentioned. 
But I'm actually very disappointed that the image preview is, well, just a preview at the moment. Because that's kind of, the multi-model was one of the main things that was leaked in the Microsoft uh, leak from last week. So I was expecting that to be a large part of the model today. Hello world. Can you describe this image in painstaking detail? All right, which first of all, think of how you would do this yourself. Uh, there's a lot of different things you could latch onto, a lot of different pieces of the system you could describe. And we can go over to the actual code and we can see that, yep, we in fact received the message, have formatted an appropriate request for our API. Yeah, the model is obviously not very fast at the moment. So there's a lot of work still left. Or but application interface. the result is really yeah, impressive. Really describe it, it knows that, that it's Discord. There's probably Discord written there somewhere where it just kind of knows this from, from prior experience. L talks about uh, all the people telling me that I'm supposed to do Q. Uh, very, very kind audience. Uh, and describes much of the, uh, the the notification messages and the users that are in the channel. And so there you go. That's some that's some pretty good understanding. Now this next one, if you notice, first of all, we got a post, but the model did not actually see the message. So is this a failure of the model or of the system around the model? Well, we can take a look. And if you notice here, content is an empty string. We received a blank message contents. The reason for this is a dirty trick that we played on the AI. So if you go to the Discord documentation, it's not formatted very well. This is literally a command A copy paste. Like this is what it's supposed to parse through to find in the middle of that document. Notice how long the token length is. Like this is a huge text. No way GPT-3 would be able to digest all of that. And GPT-4 has no problem. That's, that's required now. But let's see if it can do it. So we will ask for I, I am receiving blank message contents. So one thing that's new about GPT-4 is context length. 32,000 tokens is kind of the upper limit that we support right now. We want to see yeah, so 32,000 tokens. The rumors were saying oh, yeah. 20, 25,000. Uh, so you can either ask the model to write some code for 25,000 words. Or you could. It says, oh yeah, message content intent was not enabled. Once again, we can see that we received it, even though the bot was not explicitly tagged. Seems like a pretty good, pretty good description. Interesting. This is an interesting image, actually. It looks like it's a dolly generated one. To be fair, I don't find it very impressive. Like we could have uh, included images in uh, GPT-3 prompts for a while now. And uh, um, my own clone has shown that in the past. Now to understand what are we looking at and what's in the image, we had tools such as uh, IMG to prompt and clip interrogator for a while that could have done it pretty, pretty well as well. So even though OpenAI kind of shows it as of this very impressive breakthrough and it's still in testing and not even released yet, we've seen such things working for a while now. Let's see what else they will show us. And let's actually try this one as well. So what's funny about this image? So once again, we can verify that it's making the right API calls. Worlds do typically eat nuts. We don't expect them to use a camera or act like a human. So, no, that part that's, that's is impressive. Like understanding humor so from an image, one that is pretty impressive. One of what you can do with this model. So I have here a nice hand-drawn mock-up of a joke website. So I'm just going to take out my phone, literally take a photo of this mock-up. All right, going to send it to our Discord. I absolutely love that they the actually screen. make that uh, demo to send it to the right channel. live. So you can see that they're not faking it, they're not recording it in advance. Maybe I did not. Yes, I'm looking at you, all the uh, meta quest demos at all. <laughs> all of that. It's funny, it's always the, uh, the sort of non-AI parts of these demos that are the hardest part to do. <laughs> and here we go. Technology is now solved. And now we wait. And so we can actually take now this output. So literally we just said to output the HTML from that picture, and here we go. Actual working <laughs> JavaScript, filled in the jokes. For comparison, this was the original. Forget the LLM, show me the old star that can understand what is even on that note. And so there you go, going from hand-drawn. Okay, that is completely impressive. Show myself. 
going from a working website. Napkin going the website to an actual working right? HTML. You can see lots of different applications. We ourselves are still figuring out new ways to use this. Um, so we're going to work with our partner. We're going to scale up from there. But please be patient because it's going to take us some time to really make this available for everyone. I've shown you how to build with the system as a partner. The last thing I'm going to show is how to work with the system to accomplish a task that none of us like to do, but we all have to. So you may have guessed, the thing we're going to do is taxes. So once again, I'll do a system message. In this case, I'm going to tell it that it's tax GPT, uh, which is not a specific thing that we've trained into this model. You can be very creative if you want with the system message to really get the model in the mood of what is your job? What are you supposed to do? So I pasted in the tax code. This is about 16 pages worth of, of tax code. Um, and there's this question about Alice and Bob. They got married at one point uh, and the, here are their, their incomes and they take a standard deduction. They're filing jointly. So first question, what is their standard deduction for 2018? So while the model is chugging, I'm going to solve this problem by hand to show you what's involved. So the special rules for taxable year 2018, which is the one we care about, 24,000 is the final answer. If you notice, the model got the, to the same conclusion and you can actually read through its explanation. And to tell you the truth, the first time I tried to approach this problem myself, I could not figure it out. I spent half an hour reading through the tax code, trying to figure out this like back reference and why there's subparagraph, like just what's even going on. It was only by asking the model to spell out its reasoning and then I followed along that I was like, oh, I get it now. I understand how this works. And so that I think is where the power of the system lies. It's not perfect, but neither are you. And together is this amplifying tool that lets you just reach new heights. Uh, same to the user that the user is not perfect. That's quite a statement. <laughs> the model is not perfect, but neither are you. <laughs> and you can go further. You can say, okay, now calculate their total liability. Honestly, I, every time it does it, it's just, it's amazing. And so to end it, the final thing that I will show is I a little other dose of creativity, which is now summarize this problem <laughs> like into a rhyming in open AI. poem. And there we go. A beautiful, beautiful poem about doing your taxes. GPT-4 is now available inside ChatGPT Plus for the paying members, and it's available in the API to a waitlist that you need to sign up and should be available publicly. So there you have it, GPT-4 technological preview. The main highlights is that it's much better at logic and math. Token land has been increased from 4,000 in the API and 8,000 tokens in ChatGPT to 32,000 in uh, GPT-4. And that's not the limit, they're gonna increase it even further. It also completely uh, let go of the counter completion model and now they split it into system and messages the same way that the ChatGPT API that was released a few weeks ago works. We also, for the first time, we see a multi-model uh, large language model that can understand images, that can draw images, that can comment on what it sees in the images. And while this is impressive, we've seen multiple uh, models that can understand images before, including Clip Interrogate, Prompto IMG, that I've been talking about uh, in this channel before. It still doesn't learn on the go from uh, user data, and it doesn't learn in real time either. So it's the same base GPT 3.5 with Instact GPT, just with improved logic, with improved math model and uh, with a much longer token length. I am quite disappointed that uh, the image recognition or understanding part is still in preview and is limited only to one partner and not available as part of the API. However, it's a completely new territory for OpenAI and can understand why they want a controlled release for that. Together with GPT-4, OpenAI released the GPT-4 research paper which is 100 pages of information about how it was created, how it was trained. And I'm sure that the secrets of that paper are going to be explored and exposed in the coming weeks. So stay tuned. With OpenAI basically dominating the large language model uh, space at the moment, but many competitors, including Facebook's Lambda, including Cohere, including many other players, including Anthropic, basically like being very close behind OpenAI, they really have to step up their game and improve the model and move quickly. Thank you for watching. And if you're interested in AI uh, life hacks and other digital life hacks, be sure to subscribe, like this video, 
uh, and I will keep my eye on the new developments in the space and share them with you. Thank you and bye.